Hi, this is Henning from Flip Normals, and in today's video, we will have a proper look at folder structure and how to make your 3D projects a lot more effective by having a solid and proper folder structure. Please note that you can also download these folders directly from flipnormals.com. Uh, there's a link to that in the description. So this video here is mo more about explaining a proper folder structure instead of you recreating it based on the video. Instead of doing that, simply just download these folders and customize them to your needs. These are of course free to use for any project, no matter what they are. So there are two kinds of folder structures here, and this goes into a more fundamental concept when it comes to organizing your projects. And that is do not overcomplicate things. If you only have a single person project, meaning it's all your own personal project, please Use a simple one. If you have a project which has multiple team members and a lot of different shots, multiple sequences, then use the advanced one. There is no reason at all to overcomplicate things. Overcomplicating it simply means that it's not going to be used and you're going to end up saving everything back onto your desktop like you are doing now. So please stick to a folder structure which fits your needs. Only use what you actually need for your project. So in this video, we will go through the advanced one. The simple one is essentially the same, just simplified quite a lot. So let's get into the advanced one. So here you can see we have a bunch of different folders. You're gonna be spending most of your time in only a few of these. So let's just give a top overview of what these are. 3D, this is where you, most of your shot production actually happens. You have your shots, you have your asset, your rigs, light, all that. Concept, this is where you work when you are concepting something. Edit, where you keep your edit of the entire project, like your Premiere file, whatever you're editing in. Making off, this can be where you put your dailies or where you just put some general screenshots in there. Whenever I'm doing a project, I like to take one screenshot a day or a few screenshots a day and just put them in there. Just because that's a lot of fun looking back at the project where it was. Reference, where we put all our reference. Render output, where all the renders from all the software will go. R&D. Basically a sandbox where you can put whatever it is you need if you need to do some R&D, basically some research and development. And then we finally have textures where all your textures will go. So we are working from general to specific, meaning we are going from large to small. So let's explore the first folder first, that is 3D. So here you're being asked a question, are you working on an asset or are you working on a shot? An asset is something like an environment, prop or a character, and a shot is where you're taking all your assets together into a final shot. So let's look at assets. First, you have character, environment, and then prop. Pretty simple, work in the folder where it fits. If you're working on a character, you put it here, prop here. So into character. This is where you will make another folder based on each character. So if you have 20 different characters, you really want to have different folders for them. In the simple version of this template, we only have one folder for this. And that works really well if you have only one or two characters. But the problem is if you have a lot of different assets, a lot of different characters, this gets confusing very, very fast. So to keep it clean, make one folder per character. Then we have some few different folders here where we have the look dev, which is the shading, modeling, where you actually model it, rig it, and finally where you texture it. So each of these folders, they will have a work in progress and a published folder. The work in progress is where you're actually working on your file. And then once you're done with it, you publish it. The latest work in progress should always be the same as the published. So it means you never, ever, ever touched the published file. That will just create all sorts of confusion. You work on the latest work in progress in your folder. And then once you're done, you overwrite whatever is in the published folder. This means that anyone can always pick up the latest published and they know it's the latest one. Then we can go into the model one. This is where I've been working the most as I was a modeler. This is where we have geometry. This is where you put general geometry from different software. If you need to go between different software, instead of just lumping this in a huge delete folder on your desktop, you can put it here. If you're working in Blender and you're exporting something out, you can put it in from Blender, from Maya, from ZBrush. Feel free to you add any software here as well. Then we have texturing base FBX. This can also be a texturing base OBJ, whatever you prefer. But this is where you, when you are going from something like Blender or Maya into Painter or Mari, you really want to have some kind of texturing base or some kind of base geometry. And again, we do not put this on the desktop. We put it in a specific spot and that would go under here. So it kind of makes sense once you're starting to look into it where 
if it's 3D, yep, it's an asset, character, it's a character name, it's a model, you're, you're working on it, so I don't whip, and it's Geo. It, it's a rule-based system. Then we have a CBrush base OBJ as well, which is where you put the OBJ you are working on in CBrush. It's very handy to have all these saved out. Then we have different folders and different software. This is simply to keep it clean so you're not mixing Max and Blender and Maya files. If you work in Max, put it in here. If you work in Blender, put it in here. The thing is, it doesn't necessarily matter that much the, the specific folder structure within these one. You can be a little bit messy when it comes to that. What's important though, is when we go back to the general model folder, that whatever you published is clean, that that can, that's, that fits your general naming convention, and that this file here is clean. So like with really any pipeline, what matters the most is not where you're actually modeling it, it what matters is the output. So if you were to work in Blender and the pipeline is Maya, that's fine, as long as the final file here fits with the convention of your pipeline. And then we can go back to assets, and we have the same for the environment, and we have the same for the prop as well. You can see here as well, we also have rig for the environment, which may not make a whole lot of sense for a lot of environments, but we are keeping this as well, just because some environments needs to have some rigs in them. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is where you put your Mari or your substance painter file or design or whatever it is you're working on. So here you will just put your texturing software file. So these are all similar. The thing is you could of course just lump everything under assets. If you only have a few assets, you don't have to subdivide it this much down. But for uh, this folder structure, we are keeping this nice and organized. Going back to 3D, and then we went to shot production. This is where I always prefer to name my shots correctly. You could even have a overall folder just called the sequences. Let's say you have 20 sequences with 20 shots each, then you definitely want different folders for sequences. But if you have 10 shots and a few different sequences, I would just keep them in this folder here. So this is where we have sequence sequence 10 and shot 10. Remember, you never ever ever name a shot one or two, because that means if you have to add a shot before that, you can't, or after, you can't really do that. So here, if we need to have a shot before this one, cool, we just call this shot nine. 0009. If you need to have one before that, we call it 0008. If we need to have one after this one, we name it shot 11 or shot 15, because the next sequential shot number after this would be shot 20. So just something to keep in mind, never ever ever name something shot 1, 2, 3, 4, because then you are in a lot of trouble very quickly. Under shots, this is where we have all the different kind of shot types you could have. This is where you can, or rather, this is where you have all the stages of a shot. So we use starting off with animation, then you can have a layout, you can have effects, lighting, and then you can have comp. So all the different files are here. So if you work in a Maya-based pipeline, you might have a Maya file here, you might have maybe a Houdini file under effects, Maya under layout, maybe you have Katana or Houdini under light, and then you have nuke files under comp. Comp, technically not 3D, but we are just lumping it in so everything is under one shot. So that keeps it very nice and simple. So what I recommend you doing is when you're starting any production is first you're blocking out all the different shots you have. You simply just take this guy here and you just paste this around and you rename it to fit all your shots. That's gonna make it a lot easier. The same is done with characters as well. So if you go in here and you need to have a character, you First, you should just keep this one as a template, but then you should duplicate it right away and just name it your into all the characters you have. Then we have concept. Concept is a little messy because, and that's by nature. You want concept to be a little bit messy because you don't want to be restricted by pipeline. Concepting is usually done just by one person. At least one image is done by one person. So we want to keep that the way, keep that as flexible as we can. So under whip, this is where you can have, for instance, have a concept for. This can be a general character or an environment. One folder for this, where you can just lump whatever you want in there. And again, what's important is once the concept's done, then you publish it in here so that somebody who comes from the outside can just quickly go in and just grab all the published concepts. You could in theory not even have the asset name and just lump all the published concepts in here. That just means that if you have some kind of dailies or you need to show a client or you just need to get an overview of all the things, you just go in here and look at everything. Then we have edit. 
and this is where you can have something like animatic or previous where you just have a uh, your folder in here i never really use whip or published for editing just because i always just iterate up i never have a published edit folder because this just keeps changing constantly so animatic is for pre-production and then production is when you're actually just pumping out your play blasts, your whip lights, your your slap comps, all that, and then you just iterate on that until you are done. Then we're making off, like I said before, just put some screenshots in here and it's gonna make it nice and fun and you can also make it for dailies as well. Ref, this is where you can um, put all your reference to make it nice and easy to get an overview of that. Sometimes you need very specific reference for very specific um, assets. So here you can just put the reference under the asset or you can do the same under the shot as well it's a really really good idea to be clear about your reference it's one of the best ways you uh, you can communicate to your artist what you actually want render output this is where everything every single file that will be rendered will be rendered out to a specific folder these will all be image files or video files whatever you are doing so here we go under the shot again make sure to duplicate your shot folder and just name it correctly. So we have the final one. This is where you actually have the final output of the file. Like if you have a, if it's a 3D shot, this is the final file which has been put into Premiere. This can be an image sequence, for instance. Then we have the 3D render. So everything you're rendering out from uh, Blender or Katana, whatever it might be, you will put under 3D render. Now you can see we aren't versioning up this at all. And the reason is because if you start to version up your renders, you are adding a lot of disk space, disk space very, very quickly. So I prefer to always overwrite my renders whenever I'm doing something new. That might be a little bit tricky for you because obviously you're overwriting renders, but I just find that to be the most practical way of working. It also means that you, in your edit folder, in your comp folders, you always have the latest version. Feel free to add versions if you want that, but just be aware that your, if you have like a five minute film or something like that and you're rendering EXR files, stuff gets very, very heavy really fast. So. That's uh, 3D render. Then we had animatic. This is where you can put whatever animatic files you want. This can be some previous or this can be um, just storyboards. Then we have comp where you will render out from comp. So if you're comping in After Effects or Nuke or Fusion, all the frames will go in here. And then Play Blast, this is where animators will put all their animations. And the advantage of this structure here is that everyone will know where everything lives. If you understand the structure, there is no ambiguity. It doesn't matter if you're working on a project in two years and you need to come back to, to this one now. You, you will know exactly where something lives. It also means it's a lot easier to script something up as well because it's, a, it's incredibly consistent as well where things are living. Then we have R&D. This is where we you have, can have one folder just called experiments. Make a new folder here for whatever your experiment is. If you need to test how something, how Bifrost in my works, make a folder called Bifrost and put it in here. And then we have scripts as well. This is where you will, where you will have all the scripts you will need for your project. This is um, really handy to have a central script repository. You don't want this to be sourced on anyone's local computer. You want all the scripts to be available for everyone. If you don't do that, people are inevitably going to use some kind of script and you need it and they're off sick or something like that, or they work using different version of scripts. So make sure to have all your scripts in one location. Then we have textures. I prefer to have my textures in a separate folder like this. It just keeps it a little bit cleaner where I know this folder here only contains textures. And like before, we have character, environment, and prop. So under character, we have a character name. Make sure to make a new character, a new folder based on each character. We have work in progress where you can export out your um, different exports in here. So you can do uh, first is the text, text export 01, then you do another export, you can put this in here. And again, like with model publishers, I really prefer that the latest whip is the same as the published. The reason for this is, or the reason at least for having a published folder is that you really don't want to have something like 10 or 15 text exports here. And in the shader, you are using your sourcing from all the different folders it basically becomes impossible to figure out where anything lives at at any point 
might sound trivial if you only had like one character with a few different textures, which you're iterating on constantly. But if you have something like 10 characters and 30 props and 50 shots, this becomes very hard. So make sure in the whip folder that whenever you are putting anything in the whip folder, make sure that you are also putting them in the texture publish folder. This has saved my butt so many times and has just improved my pipeline tremendously. The same thing for the environment and prop, exactly the same process there. And that's really it for the, um, the advanced one here. We can take a quick look at the simple one as well. And you can see right away, this is gonna be much simpler. First are fewer folders here. And 3D, we have modeling. We still have some of the same folders here, just because that's handy. Then we have um, Painter and Mari. This is where I put all my uh, Painter and uh, Mari files. Mari is weird because it saves locally, but this is where we can export a Mari archive for somebody else to use or just to archive it later. Then I have the shot production. So this is where you see it's not really called, um, it's not really called like light to animation or anything like that. It's just called scene name. And this is where you name this like portrait 01 rim light or something. So the reason I don't have all the anim effects, comp, all that here is just because for one person who's working on a, pro on a project with just a few different assets, that is entirely overkill. The thing is, this gets a little bit messier, but it also, the thing is, some messiness isn't necessarily a problem. And if you're working just as a single person, you don't necessarily have to publish anything. That could just be a lot of extra work. So build a pipeline which works for your needs. And if some messiness works, that's fine. The reason you don't want any messiness in a bigger project, like in the advanced template, is simply because you have so many people working together that you can't trust that people are talking and communicating together. If a file might live in five different places, that just causes chaos. But if you are working on the project yourself, doesn't necessarily cause chaos because you remember where it was. And then we have images here where we have concepting, reference, and textures. This is where basically where I put most of my images. Then we're making off, same as before. Then we have renders and comp. This is where I put my raw 3D renders. As you can see, you don't, there isn't really a whole lot more here. You don't really have all the different frames like plane blasts and stuff like that. I just put raw renders, so whatever comes from Blender, Maya, Houdini, etc., could just go straight in here. And then I will have my comp files in here, maybe even my actual comp folder as well, or comp files, like my nuke script, my Photoshop document. And under final, this is where I will, I will put all my final images. The reason this is a bit different as well from the advanced one is that this here is more based around still images, while the advanced one is based around moving pictures. Everything becomes a lot more complicated if you are working with moving pictures. So, um, that's essentially it for these two structures. I really hope this here has been helpful for you. And, and I really find in my own experience that um, having a solid folder structure like this will just speed up my project so much. It doesn't really necessarily speed it up in the beginning, but it speeds it up in the, in the sense that you aren't making mistakes. If you are just working on a general folder somewhere random, these files are gonna get lost, you're gonna have files everywhere, and you're wasting all your time fixing things. So if you have a good folder structure, everything just works, which is amazing. And again, just a reminder that you can get both of these on flipmoments.com with the link in the description to that. So thank you so much for watching, and let me know if you have any tips regarding this super exciting topic of folder structure in the comments.